Hey guys, it's Kelly. Hey, I am going to try to do this live. You're probably going to hear background noise. It's just the story of my life. But hey, I was playing with my Simon Says uh, the March uh, kit, the card kit. It is so much fun. It is so cute. Look at this stamp set. But um, what I made, I just made a quick tag because I was just playing um, with that. I added some things to it. This little fairy, she's so cute. But I wanted to turn it into a card. I was playing with it to see if I liked it, um, if I would like what I was doing. And I wound up really liking it. So I think I'm going to try and turn it into a card with one of the sentiments that they have. But these little fairies that I have, oh my god, they are so cute. I did a card um, on this not too long ago where I colored it all with um, my alcohol markers. And um, so cute. But this was all watercolor, actually, and using things in the kit. So I'll show you what I did. I'll probably deviate a little bit. But the little fairies in here, they're so cute. They have the stamps and they have the dies for them. So you can die cut this cute little patootie. Look at her. Oh, I love her so much. She is so cute. It blurs because my camera just stinks, guys. Sorry. But um, a lot of dimension here. So the bricks are uh, individually uh, fussy cut out. And they're all individually colored um, with distress ink. And... Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So we'll see if we can do a card um, with a similar plan, but I just want to show this to you because I thought it turned out really cute. I really like it. It's just a tag and it just says spring is coming. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I just like it. It's cute. I just like to look at it. <laughs> so we'll see um, what we wind up with. So let me zoom back out. Okay. So. In the kit, there was all kinds of really, really cute things. I love these little um, quote flares. They're so cute. Kind of like a little button. They're really, really cute. Um, Tim, you know you know how I feel about Tim. He can't do it. He can't do wrong by me ever. So I love these. They do small things with great love. Let your dreams take flight. Really, really cute. I don't think I'm going to use this today because um, I'm making a card. But it was so cute. And it, the kit also had these little... Um, Kind of like the ticker tape kind of thing and their stickers. Um, I might want to use them out. I'm not sure. We'll kind of see. There's some really pretty paper in there. There was a, um, a die cut that says beautiful. Really, really cute. But I'm not here to showcase the kit. I just wanted to do a quick card. And I'm going to use one of these. I Since I already used this one, which is so cute, I might try this one. But I've got my card base here, so it takes up a little bit too much room. So if I'm going to do that, it's going to have to be off the card a little bit. So, hmm. I like this missing you and thinking of you. So I have somebody in mind for that. So I think I'll do the same one. I'll do the same one. And I'll find some paper for background on here. What I love about this, so this is just uh, some of the papers that came with it. You've got pre-cuts here. You could just put that on there and you'd be done with the card. Um, that's cute if you need a card in a hurry, but ooh, that's so pretty. Oh my gosh, all these are so cute. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. I love the stripes. Look at the boots with the flowers coming out. Oh, I'm, just, I'm in love with all this paper. It's so pretty. This is really cute too. But I think I'm just going to go with this first one. The cool thing about these is if you have a card time matching colors, um, if you just, these will go together. <laughs> you fold them, I mean, if, if you have double-sided paper, you know that the other side coordinates. So if you have a hard time coordinating, know that the other side will go well. So you can cut it in half and just do half and half on a card. Super, super quick, easy to do a card. Like this goes perfectly. Same thing with this one. This one right here, that'll go. Highlights with the pink. It works perfectly. So. For those that don't know, those two-sided papers, are the, they're awesome. They're a godsend when it comes to making a card. And I'm feeling this one. This one feels good to me, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll with this one. Um, but that will be my background. So I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to stamp it. I'm going to color it. And I'm going to use, because my card base is probably about 110. Yeah, that's 110. Um, this is 90-pound watercolor paper so I think this will work out well for me and what I like about this watercolor paper is it's very affordable it's got a nice price point 
but you've got one side that has a little bit more texture than the other. Sometimes I like the textures, sometimes I don't. When you're going to do watercolor on here, it kind of tends to bleed out a little bit. And um, this is really thick watercolor paper. This is 120 or 140. No, it's 120, I think. Um, and if you can see here, even it went underneath the tape, but and it's it's more of a I don't know. It it really soaks up the ink. And this was ink watercoloring with distress ink. So if you get a little bit too wet, it's going to kind of fly out a little bit more than what I like. So it depends on what you what what you want. So. But for me, for this, I kind of want the smooth side. And, yeah, I think that's going to work better for my plan. So, let me get my cutter, because this paper is too big. Oh, gosh, what is it? I don't even know. It's not even mine. It's like pretend nine. Oh my god, it tells me right on the thing. It's 9 by 12. So, if I do this one at 4, I'll do 4 and a half. Hmm. Yep, that'll work. I want some cut space, so I'm going to do 4 and a half by 5 and a half. I don't know. It's just what I decided. And I'll save these pieces for another project. Okay. Now I'm going to get my Misty out. I do have the Tim Holtz uh, stamp platform too, which I love that too. Um, this is just here and, and easier. It's a little bit bigger too. I got the smaller Tim Holtz one. Um, and I like it. It's fine. And then I want to show you guys, I got, this isn't my idea, I got this from uh, Jennifer McGuire. Um, these little paper pads that you get for your um, Misty, that's the paper pad. Um, she had the idea to laminate them. And, there's that piece I was looking for. It went flying. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> Anywho, um, I uh, laminated a couple of these and I just keep using them over and over and over again. And it doesn't it's awesome. It's, it was such a good idea from Jennifer McGuire. So if you have a laminator and you have these little these little things, um, your papers, you don't have to ruin them and throw them away. You can just reuse it over and over and over again. It's awesome. All right. So I really liked the design of my tag. So I'm going to kind of let that guide me. I really like the bricks. I really like the background color. We'll probably deviate from it a little bit. The other thing I didn't like is I, I had to uh, I made the frames of the window. I kind of messed that up a little bit. Probably no one would really notice but me. It just makes it look more vintage and like an older thing that it has some damage to the wood, which is fine. So I didn't mind that. But this is the stamp uh, kit that cut the stamp set that comes in the kit. It is called if you want to do it Spring Windows. Um, I got a die in there. Super cute and these little speckly things. They make, now I like the background of a stucco wall just to have the imperfections in it and then to have the brick showing through. I thought that was cute. You could probably tear one and have it look all kinds of, I don't know, Venice or whatever. But um, I didn't because I kind of like the whimsical feel of it too. So, But these little speckly things are like imperfect imperfections in a uh, stucco wall. The bricks are so, they're so cute. I'm going to get a lot of use out of that. Um, but these windows are really, really cute, and you can color the flowers in there, and then they have the sentiments. This is the one I'm going to use today, Missing You and Thinking of You. Um, you can use the sentiments, but what I use on the other one is Spring is Coming. So, really, really cute for cards, for sure. Um, really nice sympathy card that would be, too, if you think about it. Hopefully no one needs that, but, you know, sometimes we do, unfortunately take my stamp and then the voiceovers guys I, I, I'll tell you I just don't have time I would be doing way more videos if I didn't have to do voiceovers that is the reality of my life I just have too many demands um, in my life to, to do voiceovers all the time so um, I have all kinds of videos and I record myself all the time doing crafty things in my craft room but 
I gotta do the voiceovers and they take forever. And I just don't have that kind of time. Otherwise I'd be doing way more videos and I really miss doing videos. I really miss doing this, but life has thrown me some different um, challenges, so I kinda can't. So no line coloring is a thing, not for me. Not a thing for me. Now I'm not sure if I'm gonna use alcohol inks. I probably won't. Um, but I like to use the Gina K um, Amalgam ink. It's in Obsidian. I like to use that because that's gonna work with whatever medium I decide. Like if I change my mind and say, oh, I wanna use Distress, or oh, wait, no, I do wanna use my alcohol inks. Um, this will give me the freedom to do that. So tap, 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 tap. Put that down. I like to rub it on there. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. But I don't have a very good stamp on there. So we're going to do it again. This is a new ink pad, so it's not the ink pad. It's the operator. I just bought my head on my video camera. It's like right at my head level. I might have to move that up so I don't knock myself unconscious. Hey, maybe it'll be something that goes viral. Who knows? Um, I need it one more time. I'm not happy with that. And the frame for the window, it's not, it's, it's not stamping perfectly. It has some imperfections on it, and that's actually what I like about it. It makes it look even more, um, I don't know, it gives it a vintage feel. Like this is a window like I see in like an older home. It's kind of my view on it, but yeah, that's better. Okay. I will leave that there. I like it. Hold on. I'm not going to worry too much about cleaning my stamp like crazy because I'm going to get a lot of use out of this stamp. I'll tell you, the more ink it has on it, it seems to be better. It does a better job for me. Put that back real quick. That's the thing with voiceovers, like you can you can avoid all of this like cleaning and putting back and stuff like that, but um, we all gotta do it, right? So if I wanna do videos and I don't have time for voiceover, then I gotta find a happy medium. So Alright, and when I did this last time, I um, I'll show you a boo-boo I made. It's not really a boo-boo, it won't be fine. But I tried to emboss it and I double stamped it and my stamp was off. So I was like, well, whatever. So then what I did was I, I sprayed uh, my pixie spray on there. So now I've got a, um, it's a little sticky, probably the perfect amount. Um, now I've got a mask. It's a little thicker. So that for a mask, this probably isn't ideal, but at least I didn't waste it. One way to look at it, I guess. All right, I think we're done with that for now. Probably not. No, I'll have to bring that back out, but I will when I need it. So I'm gonna make sure I dry this because I made the mistake of um, coloring on this once and it wasn't completely dry. And again, that's not the product issue, that's a user issue. <laughs> so and I like this 90 pound uh, watercolor paper for cards. The watercolor paper that I usually use, I really like the really thick one, but that's more for my art journals and things like that. Um, but when it's a card that's going to go in the mail, I want it to be sturdy, but I don't want it to be like a cardboard. <laughs> so, okay, I like that. So in the kit also there was, um, which I didn't know how I was going to feel about it. I made some swatches here, um, but there was three distress markers. And um, I've never worked with these before, and I actually really like them. Um, you can go direct. You can, uh, oh gosh, I played with it to see how they would wick out. I really like this effect here, too. <clears throat> but I did pick raspberry on there. 
just so that I had the feel for the colors because they're going to be a little bit more muted. So these are distressed, so they're not oxide. Um, so they don't blend as well. They're not quite as forgiving. But I really, really liked them for coloring. Like for the, um, for the roses here, I used this just straight on there. It was really, oh, I don't think I, and when it dries out, again, it'd be my fault because I didn't put the lid back on. It does take some force to put these back on, but that's okay. I mean, you got to keep them juicy, otherwise they're not going to work. So in that kit, I wound up getting picked raspberry, cracked pistachio, mermaid lagoon, three of my favorite colors, and they're very spring-like. Um, I love how mermaid lagoon looks on here. I loved cracked pistachio on here, um, and I just used a brush, a watercolor brush, and just brushed it out. You can get all kinds of different variations of the colors. You can get a darker version depending on how much water you do. Go straight to paper. You can get a knife. I mean, all I mean, so many different colors with just these three markers. So there's that. Um, now what I'm going to do again? I'm going to try to do the background. And the way that I got this color was from the uh, vintage photo oxide. So let me move these and get my inks and my little thing of jars. And I'm going to need all of my inks. I got four of these tins, like this, four of these, some with distress, some with oxide. Oh, I'm sorry, I got five of them. So, If I remember right, the background was vintage photo in oxide, which this doesn't look like vintage photo, does it? It has like a yellow tinge to it, but once you start uh, watering it down a little bit, um, it looks good. So, and I was just painting with it, so I'm going to try the same thing and we'll see if it works. I know I'm going to cut this down so it doesn't have to be perfect. And again, another reason why this isn't the best... Um, I'm going to spray this again real quick, guys. Hold on. With my pixie spray. What? Ugh. I've had this for a long time and I haven't used it. I actually forgot that I had it. I just sprayed in the garbage can. It's got a little blob on there, too. But this stuff is really good. It's repositionable. So, I like it. Let me get that blob out. And I touch it a little bit because I want to make sure that it's not going to leave a residue on there because that's what happened with the other one. Um, just a warning on that. If you're going to color, it left a little uh, residue of the um, adhesive and then it resists so it wouldn't take the color. So it was a little bit of a challenge but not a big deal. Okay, so vintage photo oxide. And if I remember right, I think I started here. I think that's how I did it. Let me get my... I got just a little... It's a little glass jar. These are those... Whatever those little yogurt things. Um, I just wash them and get the sticky off. And I keep these little tiny jars. Recycle them for my little water needs. You know, if I'm doing some big water coloring project, now that's a little bit different. But if it's just a small one, like this one, there's a simple card that I'm just going to do a little bit of watercoloring. I just use that little one and it works nice. Alright. That's not that's not going to be anywhere near enough. So i got to put some more down here. So, and the reason why I changed that colors, for those that don't know, um, I think most people that watch my channel do know, um, it's because it's once you add the water, it's already oxidized before you even put it on. So, and I'm just slapping it down. Look, there's no, you don't have to be like this professional artist or anything to get this done. You just slap it down. <laughs> and I'm being really rude about it on purpose. Not rude, but you know, just slapping it. Because like, to show that like, a child could do this, for real, just let them do it. Now my paper is only 90 pounds, so you see it's gonna it's gonna do what it's doing right now. There's no way to get around that when you use this paper. 
But I like the different levels of color because that's what you're going to get in an older building. You're going to get some areas in a building that are going to be a little bit more worn than others. And I'm okay with that. This isn't about being a perfect thing. It's the, imperfe the imperfections is what I like about it. And then if it happens again, this time like it did last time, um, my, uh, oh, I just went under, but that's okay. My mask, since it's so thick, it, it didn't allow for it to get close enough, but that's okay. I'll just go ahead and touch it up later. And I want it a little bit darker, just a little bit. A little bit of water. Yeah, I like that variation a little bit better. At the top, there's going to be some water damage on a building usually. I used to be a home inspector, believe it or not. <laughs> so, and then underneath the window, um, it could be a little bit darker down there too. That's it. How easy is it? And you know, you look at it and you're like, well, that doesn't look good. Well, give it time. I know it doesn't look good right now. That's okay. Clean that up real quick. Then I'm going to dry it. Take that off. And I'm okay if a little bit got through there because that's going to be brown anyway. It's just going to be a darker brown. I'm fine with that. And see how this area over here didn't get it? It didn't get any color? No big deal. that right now. Just a little bit of water. This is going to be like more of a watercolory kind of thing so it's okay that it's not again it's the imperfections of it that make it cool I think. But that is my opinion. Of course. I'm gonna get a little closer in there. And these flowers will be colored later. I gotta spread a little bit more. I don't like how that looks right there. That looks a little too try hard. I'm gonna cut all that down. I'm going to get a little darker closer. Alrighty. Looks good to me. Oops, sorry guys. Get out of screen. I think I'm done with vintage photo for a little bit. And I really like the blue. I use Blue Lagoon for around um, the frame, and then I use, I think, Stormy uh, something. Uh, or maybe it was blue. Um, I don't remember. I'll find it. I'm going to make sure this is good and dry. So in the camera, it looks more brown. This one's more brown than the other one. I actually like it. Okay. I'm going to straighten it out. All I do is I pull it on the edge of my table, pull it down like that, and straighter. Not perfect, but better. If it's really bugging you guys, run it through your, your um, die cutting machine. Straight as board. Won't be a problem. But I'm going to leave it just the way it is. Um, the speckle little thingamajigger bobbers that I really like on the stamping thing, I'm going to go ahead and stamp those now and I'm going to use my mask again. So, this will make it look like a like imperfection, I don't know. I'm just going to use a block for this so I have the freedom to kind of move around as I need to. And for this, I'm actually going to use walnut stain 
a little bit darker, so I'll have a little bit of a contrast here. Um, that back down. And it's wonky because I have the foam thing. I'll tell you, I, I don't mind the foam things, but I prefer, I can't help it guys, I prefer the flat ones. I just, I've been doing it that way for so long, and I think that that just works best for me. That's just me. You do you, but that's what I find works best for me. So I'm going to do, I know I'm going to be cutting this down, so I'm just going to randomly do this. They don't need to be perfect. There is no perfect. I'm actually adding imperfections with a stamp. Isn't that funny? I guess I could do like speckles, but I like this stamp, so I'm just going to use it. I'm just going to do it all over. I'm going to rock and roll it. I will find a way to like it. Okay. I like how that looks. I know I'm going to cut that down, so it's okay that it doesn't go all the way to the edge. So, that, I'm still going to need. So what I was going to do differently this time, because the fussy cutting of the bricks was making me crazy. It really was making me crazy. So I wanted to try to put the bricks um, on it and uh, see if I can make that happen. So let's see. I got this little. One. It's got my handmade with love stamp because I don't have my own uh, custom stamp for the cards I make. I just initial them. Um, but I could just use the other side of this. Oh, no, I can't use that for all of them. It's not quite big enough. Let me get my smaller block. I don't have, I literally only have three blocks. Well, four blocks, counting that little small one. But I, I've had these forever. They're the same ones for since the dawn of time. So we're just going to take some of these out and just randomly stamp them wherever I think they're going to work. And these are going to be colored. So what I think I'm going to use for this is, because um, I know I'm going to want to color them so I don't want the lines of the bricks to move. So what I'm going to use is one of my archivals and I think I'll use ground espresso. So it's an archival um, distress color. So it's not going to bleed. Now the color underneath will bleed, but that's just going to mix in with the colors that I want to use for the bricks. So, and I like to have them kind of like around the window, like coming out. So I think I'll do one right there. And then of five but this one this bigger one is really cool too so we'll put that one mm. probably crooked but that's okay Oops, oh well, I'll draw that in. No big deal. And I'll use a different variation. This is the smaller one, which is up high, so that doesn't make sense yet. So I'll use the bigger one again. And again, I'm going to cut it down. I don't know how much, but we'll figure that out when we need it. Um, there looks good to me. 
And again, this mask being so thick is creating issues for when you're stamping around it. And it's fine. It's, 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 it's just fine. It's not the end of the world. This is about having fun and not being stressed and going, oh my gosh, I just messed that up. I don't care. I want to make something nice, you know, and I get frustrated when things don't work out as I anticipated, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to get upset about it. Otherwise, this isn't enjoyable. Oops. Doing it backwards. I'm going to try one that is not coming out. Rolling around out there. Okie dokie. I think that's enough brick. Well, maybe I want more, one more at the bottom here. There we go. Now, I really liked on the tag the um. I really liked the uh, dimension of it, but if I'm mailing it, you know, that that can be an issue, right? So, all right, I think I got all that stamping that I want to do there done. Okay, so there goes my mask, and I'm going to keep my mask, even though it's a little thicker, it still works. A thinner piece of paper would be better, but that's what I round up with. So I can extend that line to meet the um, frame if I want to, and I might, I don't know, we'll see how it goes, maybe, maybe I will, maybe I won't. We're done with that for now. Okay, now to color it. So I liked how I did it last time with the picked raspberry. Um, that was really, really cute. I've got a really, really fine um, watercolor brush. Let me get that. I really love this brush. It's a Princeton brush, Aqua Elite number 10. This is like my, oh, it is the best for bigger areas. Even for smaller areas, like it comes to this beautiful, beautiful tip and I can actually use it on this. I absolutely love this brush for watercoloring. Um, always would recommend that. So again, it's Aqua Elite Princeton brush. It's a round brush and it's a number 10 brush. And I believe I got this from um, Michaels, I believe. So absolutely love that brush. Um, I have this teeny, teeny brush that is for really fine details. And then I, just, I gotta grab them all. I'm not sure which one I need. I don't need that one. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure. But they're all right there. So I can choose them if I need to. Okay. So to color these, um, trying to think. If I use my alcohol markers, it's going to bleed out beyond. Um, I can kind of color, cover, color over that. I liked the blue and how that looked with the flowers. I thought that was cute. But maybe I'll start with the bricks. I think that's where I'll start. So for the bricks, use what to use. I think I'm looking at my distress right now. So for my distress colors, I have a mini for this one. I accidentally ordered that, which is fine. All that stain. going to bring out all my different variations here. I don't need my archival anymore. I don't think. I got gathered twigs, walnut stain, mm. a 
vintage photo always. And black soot. Might be a little dark, dark, dark. I got tea dye too, but I think I got that in the background, so I've got to offset what I've got in the back. And ground espresso. I'm gonna start with ground espresso. I do love these little these little ones, but they don't have a monoxide and they're probably never going to from what Tim says, so it'll be what it'll be. I'm gonna start down here. I think I'll have a light coming this way. And we're gonna have a shadow right here. So, hopefully you guys can see this. Let me get here, and I'm gonna zoom you in. So you can see a little bit better. I love coloring with distressing. I absolutely love it. It is so cool, so forgiving, calming. Um, if you don't like to color, then, then don't, but I, I personally love this. Really, really do. I just have a little bit of water, and I'll show you like how much that I take. A lot of people are like, I don't know how to do this. It doesn't work for me. Tiny bit of water over here. Grab some color. You can see how wet this is, so it's 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 more saturated. So I'm gonna get less color. So the more water you put in, the lighter that color is gonna be. Now I do have the luxury of having this background here with a brown already, so it's helping. I'm just putting shadows where they would be. And again, I'm not an artist, guys. I, take the, I, I, I think I see this in every video that I do, so. I am not a professional artist. I'm just someone in my craft room playing with my stuff. <laughs> Literally. But um, I'll tell you, if I could make a living doing this, I would. I absolutely would. I would love to able to do this for a living and still have enough to be comfortable but that is just not realistic so I'm liking how that's looking so it looks really really now if you look all close it doesn't look good but when you when you stand back a little bit look this is just one color I mean I could add a heck of a lot more but And, and you know what, guys, if you don't like to see somebody color this way, then by all means, just fast forward to, you know, a little bit ahead, because this won't last forever, but, but some people, like, I, I like, uh, Christina Warner, I could watch her color all day. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. With her markers, and she's got these new, um, aqua markers, the Karen markers, I think she called them, Karen markers. And I was like, wow, I have to get myself some of those, but I, I just, I have so much stuff. I just need to use what I have. But those Karen markers look like they're just awesome. I was like, seriously, I, I must have those. I'm like, nope, calm down, calm down. You don't have time to play with them anyway, so use what you got. <laughs> and I have a lot, so I am blessed. I say blessed, but, you know, I work hard, so, so I can have this stuff. I'm just blending these little harsh lines out because once they dry they kind of look a little harsh but they're bricks and they're weathered they're supposed to be that way so just a tiny little dip tiny little brush really really thin and it gets the job done it doesn't take that long I'm taking the ones closer to the to the window um, all the way to the window and then I'll come back and add sh uh, shading, darker shading, um, on the corner. So. And if you want it darker, you just grab more of the ink and less of the water. It's that simple. So forgiving just to do shading with Distress Ink. Now this is an oxide that I'm using, this is just Distress Ink. So if I used oxide, it would be a little bit different. Oxide is so good for, um, for blending, you know, and, and really nice, soft, muted colors. When you get more vibrant colors, 
um, with the regular distress ink. Just the way it's formulated. There's reasons for it. Tim knows what he's doing. And he has so many videos out there, if you guys haven't watched them. Um, so many, so many um, Q&As and he's got um, demos where he demos the products that he has. He's got great products and he's selling his product, yeah, but again, as I say often, I mean, if I had products, I'd be selling them too, so, and he makes great stuff. But the cool thing is he, he will always in his videos just say, hey, if you don't, um, if you don't have this, then use what you have. You can also do it with this. You can also do it with that. And he actually puts that out there because it's the joy of just creating. He, he likes the journey just like the rest of us, so. Oops, I went outside the line. Oh well, looks like a speckle. See? Forgiving. That's what I'm talking about. I need more water on this one. It's a little bit too harsh. If I don't like it, put more water and lift it up. That simple. I usually use a paper towel, but I don't have one handy right now. If you wait until it dries, if it's um, too light or too dark, or you want to add different variations, then wait till it dries, then come back like this one down here. Wait till it dries, and then add a little bit more ink right there. And then you'll get the shadows that you want. If you keep going in when it's not dry, you're not going to get the results that you want. Because it's just going to keep blending or mixing together. Give it a minute to dry. When you want to layer colors with Distress Ink, the trick is letting it dry. And we have a heat tool, so if you're impatient like me, just use the heat tool. Problem solved. bit more water and then I'm going to bring that color down because it doesn't look. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing down here. It needs to be darker than the background otherwise it just looks too forced. There we go. Feel a little bit better about that. It was looking like it was just a drawn on brick instead of an actual brick. Needed more variation between the background and the color of the brick, if that makes sense. Okay, this side needs some work. <coughs> this will be a little darker now that it's dried. You can still pull down because it's still gonna re it's it's distressing. Sorry guys, it's distressing, so it's still gonna um re it's still gonna activate with water, but um. It's going to be a little muted because it's dried. But otherwise it just, it, it's not contrasted enough if you don't go back in after it's dried a little bit and add just a little bit more. I got the shadow and now that the shadow is dry I can pull that color from the shadow down a little bit with just a little bit of water. And finding the right amount of water, guys, is like it's got to be it's got to be the ratio to to the project. So I'm not going to put a big blob of water down here because it's a small area that I'm coloring. I just need a little my little brush um, to get it to move. Oops, I don't like that one. Like if you put too much water, it's going to go outside of the the frame that you're using. And the frame being what I stamped. Um, if you use too much, you're going to let it flow all along there. So just a little bit of water, fill it out, and then add, you know, you can, and then again, you just use a paper towel, and I'll anything that I didn't like, you just tap it, and you'll get it out of there. Remove it 
now I'm, I'm losing some of my shadow. So I'll just add it back in. And I grab from the, what I do up here, I don't know if you can see it, but up here is the ink pad straight to the palette. Down here is where the water is. So if I want a little bit more shadows because I, I got rid of some of it for whatever reason, too much water or whatever, um, once it's dry, see what I'm doing is I'm going in here trying to do it and it's not dry. So I need to let it dry and then I'll come back to that. Because I don't have enough, I want a little bit more shadow on that one. This one, I need darker bricks. So I pull just a little bit of the ink, a little bit of the water, fill it out. That was a little too much, so I'm going to add more water. And then once you do that, you lose a little bit of your sh of your shading. No big deal. Once it dries, you can just go back and redo it if you need to. That'll work. And then this one didn't do it all, so we'll start up here. Because the light's coming this way, so I want the shadow there. At least that's that's what I'm, that's the illusion though. And the speckles that are in the bricks, you can see that it's it's rewetting, so it just bleeds right in, so you don't even see them. this one dry very well so that's why it's not I don't have a good variation there. Oh, any darker up here. See when I take up here from the ink it's that's how you get your darker one. If you go oh lord that's too dark darn it all right then you just use your paper towel. Like if I said that was too dark dab it out add a little water and it gets better. Personally, I liked it that dark, so I'm going to go back in. <laughs> but if you keep adding and keep adding and, and I don't let it dry, it's going to wick out side of your border and it's not going to look right. So look, done already. I don't know how much time that was. Am I still recording? Yes. There we go. Teeny, teeny, tiny little bit of ink. I'm going to dry it. I'm going to go with what I got. I'm not crazy about this down here. But the way that it looks like the brick is broken, I'm just going to let it happen. It's going to be what it is. I could put another one up here, kind of level it out. It looks like it's blank up here and there. But, oh, you know what? i got to put, ah, uh, see? I didn't think ahead. My stamp, my sentiment's going to go over here. So I'll have to find a way to, I'll have to fussy cut it. That's going to be the only way to really do that. All right, so I like that. I hope you guys do too. It looks pretty cool. It's got some shadows in there, all kind of brownie. And then I think I'll do the same thing um, that I did on the other one is have this be nice and dark. Um, really, really dark for the base because it's kind of like, a, you know what, I guess I could do... I just realized that what I didn't do is this is the planner. This right here that she's sitting on. This is the planter at the window. This is the frame. I should have done that separately. So maybe I'll do it this way. I was going to do blue all the way around. Uh, let's see. I'm going to leave that out. I'm going to leave all these out because I might do the planner in that. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with, again, oh, and I just cleaned it all up. Oh, well. It's like a tiny, like, there's no expense with that, for real. So I'm going to do it again. Let me roll water over. Very little water, because I want a nice, dark. Oops, I just did the wrong thing. That's not what I wanted. Dang it. 
and then it's ready to erase it. Forgiving. See what it said? <laughs> Tragedy averted. This is what I wanted. Darn it. Let's try that again. This is going to be my base color. I could probably use a bigger brush, but whatever. I'm going to use a bigger brush. That's going to make me crazy. The bigger brush, it'll hold more water. So that's something that took me a while to kind of, and I still haven't mastered it, I don't think, but um, to know how much water to have on your brush uh, to get done what you want to get done is a trick that just takes practice. There is no magic answer to that puzzle. It's just, it takes practice. Because all I can say is, I don't know, you got to feel it. you gotta, you got to get a feel for how much water you need in your brush. Now, this brush I'm using right now, gosh, I'm sorry, guys. The brush I'm using right now holds a lot of water. Um which is one of the things I love about it. But if you don't realize that when you first start with it, you're gonna get a result that you're not crazy about. Let's see how it gets to a tip. It gets to a really, really pointy tip. So I can really get the detailed areas too. That's, that's why I love this brush. It's my go-to brush for, even for the small details like this. Now in these little flowers, I, I'm not, I could, I guess, but you know why? There's no, I mean, I have better brushes for that. But this would work if I needed it to. So just trying to get some variation in the coloring there. Now I'm going to need some black soot. Yep, black soot. Like, really? Yep. That's what I need. So this is my really, really tiny, tiny brush. And I'm just doing the top of it. I want to identify it as, as a planter. It's a different, it's separate from the frame of the window. That's what I didn't do in the last one. and I. I look back now, I'm like, darn it, I probably should have done that. color with just straight ink if you really want to. I find that I, I just need to add a little bit of water to it. And I want that a little bit darker. Where I want it darker, I'm just grabbing the ink only, no additional water. That will give me a little bit of a shadow. Very subtle. I can't even see that at all, but we can. All right. And then I need to do something here because the planner needs to have more depth. Um, I started with my darkest brown. So let's make sure it's dry and then I'll just go in with a walnut stain. Nope, brown espresso. I'm just going to go in with brown espresso again. I might bring in some of that black that's already in my palette and we'll see if I need it. Good enough. I need to 
get some more water out of there. It's holding a lot of water, so I think I might have overdone it. Yeah, I did. No big deal. More ink. And that's water. Easy fix. I'm feeling like my brush is too big. There's going to be a shadow here because it's coming underneath a lip. I just want it on the tip. That's again why I love this thing because only grabbed it on the tip. This is pretty much just straight ink. Very little water. Now it looks like it's got shading. Hopefully. At least it does to me. Leave it alone. Enough is enough. That's my other thing too, is like when is enough enough? I gotta know that stop, let it dry, and then take a look at it and see where you're at, right? Because once it dries, it could get a little bit lighter. And that shade variation that I want will happen when it dries and it looks like that's happening. If I need more, I could add just a little bit of water in the area that I want lighter and lift up some of that color, but I don't think I'm going to need to because I think it's going to be good enough for me. Just the way it is. I need more black. And that is not going to work because that's too much water, so I need more ink. So I just slap some down. And you can look at it and you can tell where you are, like as far as the shade. I need more, 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 more ink. And you guys don't have to go to this kind of detail. I mean, you know, if you're just like, no, just color it and be done. You know, I like to do the shading because I'm finally figuring it out um, the right way to do it. So I really enjoy doing it. I don't get it right all the time, but um, the depth that it gives to a project when you get your shading right is undeniable, and uh, I like that. So, and it's always been something that I wanted to work on. And again, practice is the only way I've been able to make it work. If I don't practice the skill, I can't possibly make it work. So it's a very subtle change, but I notice it, and it makes me feel better. <laughs> But you do you. Okay, so I got my boo-boos down there. I'm going to fix those with my markers. So I liked the blue. I liked how the blue looked with this, with the pink and the orange and the yellow and the green in all my florals. So I really like that. So I think I'm going to do that. Hmm. I don't know if I want to mop that up yet because I might want to add some more shading in my bricks, but it looks pretty good. I should just leave it. Oh, I do need my, um, no, I don't. Those are all going to be green. All right. There it goes. For those that don't know, hand sanitizer to clean this glass mat is the best thing to use. The best thing. Alright, so on these markers, they're super cool. I have never used them before except for that uh, tag that I made earlier. Um, let me move you guys over here so I can 
be down. I'm probably going to bang my head, so sorry guys. Um, but you got a fine tip, which is really, really cool. Like the fine tip is like fine, like you can write a letter with it. Like I wrote it there. Like this is the picked raspberry. So um, fine tip, and then it's a brush tip. I really like the brush tip. Works great. Um, and that's what I'm going to use for the roses again, because if it works, why change it? And I like just using the marker as is. Now, I could do some shading in the flowers. I'm not going to get all crazy with that, because they're so small. But if I wanted to, I could. I'm just going to put them in with a marker. You can get variations of the color. If you wait, let it dry, then come back in and do another layer of it. You can layer them for sure. And there's roses over here too. So I'm going to do that really quick. I love picked raspberry. I don't have the new uh, Kitsch Flamingo. I don't have that new color yet. It just came out. I don't have that yet. Um, but I really think I'm going to like that pink. Because I don't have a whole lot of pink variation for my um, Distress. All I have is picked raspberry. Uh, Festive Berries isn't very pink. So I don't have a lot of pink. I'm usually not a big fan of pink, but See, that's, now that that's dry, that's what I wanted, the, the shading, and it looks like, yeah, that's what I wanted. So now, um, cracked pistachio wasn't dark enough for the leaves, so I had to use something different. Um, I'll put these guys back for now. And then Stormy Sky, that's what it was. I think I used Stormy Sky and this marker, I think. Yeah, I think that's what I did. And when I used the marker, I don't think I went straight to the paper. Um, I think that I went here and then picked it up. I'm going to test it and see. Pretty sure that's how I did it. Because that's the cool thing about the markers too. It's just like, you know, putting it on your... Hmm. I must have put a few colors on there because that's really light. Let's see. And maybe I just... Hmm. I don't remember what I did. Shame on me for not keeping a record of it, but I kind of like just coloring it on there. That looked good. If we do straight on there. Uh, because then the stormy sky is going to come in and it's going to not be able to compete. And the stormy sky one. Hmm. Gotta think this through. Maybe I didn't use this at all. I think I did. Maybe I used salty ocean. I don't remember. of Salty Ocean. Ooh, that might have been what I did. Oops, wrong color. I'll try it. Can't go wrong with Salty Ocean and Stormy Sky. You just can't. But I like the lagoon! 
I love the lagoon colors. Oh, I have it right here too. Maybe I did do that. You know, I'm just going to put it all down and we're going to see. So if my frame, the outside frame was Stormy Sky, the inside shutters were um, the lighter blue. So with that said, this is Mermaid and that's going to be the inside one. Stormy. It, I'm sorry, I gotta start over because I can't remember. Oh, not something. Stormy Sky. So that was the outside. Don't want to have too much water. Drop down here. Gonna be a little darker down here because the background is vintage photo. See all the water on there? How it's how it puddles like that? That's what's so great about this brush is it really holds a lot of water, but sometimes you don't want that much, so you just dab it on your towel or your paper towel or whatever you got that you're using. Just dab it on there. And again I want the shadows on each side. More so over here. Got a lot of ink on my palette from that. That's one of my newer um, colors in my distress line. So it's nice and juicy. I should be investing in um, re-inkers. I only have a few of them. I don't have a lot of them. But one thing at a time. I probably don't have to be so meticulous about separating these colors here. But I want it to be... I want the first layer to be nice and smooth, and then I'll come back and do my shading. That's what I'm going to do. Because down there the shading didn't go very well. Because I didn't allow it to dry. That is the trick. I finally figured that out after watching Tim's videos like 400 times. Let it dry. You don't have to be patient. Use your heat tool. Let it dry, and then go back. Also, I learned that from uh, Christina Warner, watching her color. Again, I could do that all day. I don't know why. It's just calling to me. Just is. I'm going to let this dry down here, and then I'll come back to it. So I just realized I'm way out of, because i got to see. Getting older, I'm losing my vision. I'm not losing my vision. Oh, look what I'm doing. not the area I needed the color. This is the shutter. That is going to be a different color. I'm going to lift it. That's that forgiving stuff I was talking about. Gotta love it. It's still a little bit there, but it's fine. Right, pay attention. Like I was saying, as I get a little bit older, I'm going to be 50 in June. And uh, ready for the second half of my life. The kids are all getting grown up. I'm going to have to get a puppy or something. And probably about two or three years will be pretty much empty nesters. Kids are going to college. So my this is 29, wait, he'll be 30 this year. Um, he's 29, and he's got a little grandbaby. Oh, God, I can't stand it. She's so cute. I can't even handle how cute she is. It's just over the top. Like, And then they got a puppy, a little um, labradoodle, a golden labradoodle. Oh, my God. The, the level of cuteness that happens in their home is just intoxicating. It's just too much. It's so cute. But yeah, she's six months old, my grandbaby. 
She is so perfect in every way. I was dreading being a grandma, and now I, I just hate myself for dreading it. I'm like, what were you thinking? For one, it's not about you. It's about your kids and them starting their family. And, uh, oh my gosh, it was just such a beautiful thing to be a grandma. And I don't get to see her anywhere near as much time as I would like. Um, but, yeah. Perfect. She is just perfect, perfect, perfect. But, um, yeah, so I was saying I was going to be 50 in June. And uh, I've noticed you know, things happen to us women when we get a little bit older. So, among other things, um, vision is like, I have to go back again and get my eyes checked because it is not yeah my glasses that I had before do not work I actually have to use readers uh, tri-level readers to see what I'm doing here so but there are there are worse things for sure worse things that could be happening right now so I, I live with gratitude all the time all right, so I like this stormy sky is a really cool color. It's it tends to be a little pale, but when it's offsetting something else, it's a really nice uh, contrast, I think. Stormy sky is great for a galaxy scene for sure, and you do like the white dots in it and everything. It's really great for that. Um, but this is working too. I'll come back and add some shading later. Now, for card making, this may seem like a big pain in the butt, you know, and it might be. So, I started this as a card, but I actually might wind up doing this as an art journal page. I actually might just stick it in my art journal. I think it would be the last page, or the second to the last page of my art journal. Because I like how it's turning out. And when you make cards, um, I mean, this would be a great card, and I had somebody in mind for it, but I can I can reproduce it in no time at all. Um, but the, the techniques and the shading and things like this, it's something that I like to kind of keep and then make notes on what I did, what I liked, what I didn't like um, for the next time. Um, so that when I make a card the next time, you know, or an art journal page, whatever I decide, um, I'll know. I'll know what was successful and what was not. Right, I've got some white spots i got to take care of. Oh, I keep forgetting. I get it too close to me and then you guys can't see it. But I kind of like how the blue looks because it looks like a um, like a painted like somebody painted it and it's weathered. It has like a a weathered look to it, I think. And maybe it'll be better once I come back and do some shading too. So, and again, this brush look it goes to such a fine tip. Ugh. You guys gotta get one. There's lots of really good brushes out there. And I do not remember, guys, I'm so sorry, I don't remember how much I paid for this, but I'm sure I used a coupon for it. And I'm sure it was a, it was, you know, at least, at least 30% off or I wouldn't have bought it. Because I'm, I have to stick to a budget on, you know, my supplies. Because if I don't, I'll just, I buy, I buy too much and then I'm overwhelmed with what I have and then I don't know what to do and then I lose my creative mojo. If I have to use what I have, I, I find that I'm more creative that way. But if I overwhelm myself with too many products and too many new things, then I'm like, I don't know what to do. It's, there's too many options, and then I do nothing. And I don't like that either. So I'm going to leave that ink there because I'm going to come back to that. Once everything dries, you know what, I think I'll, I'll dry it and just come back to it right now. Get all my shading done. So guys, let me know in the comments if you're like, yeah, Kelly, I don't want to see you color. I don't like what you're doing. Uh, or, hey, I kind of like this. It's helping me. Can you do this more? Can you do the live videos without editing? I like that better. Um, my husband's going to be home soon, and he'll turn on the TV, and we'll hear some noise. That's, you know, and he works hard. So if he wants to t watch TV when he comes home, then he's going to watch TV when he comes home. I'm not going to tell him, hey, be quiet. I'm doing a video. <laughs> you know, I'm just not going to do that. So that's some of the challenges and why I'm like, okay, my family's just doing their thing in the background and you guys don't need to hear that and nor would you want to hear that. 
but every once in a while when I've got some free time where it's kind of quiet, um, I try to do these videos. But again, these videos could take a long time. And I might not have all that free quiet time in the background. So, but if you like the coloring, if you like to watch that, and this is something that you're benefiting from and you'd like to see it more, um, honest, be honest in the, you know, I like candid feedback and what you guys like to see and what you don't. Because I only share because I'm hoping that I can help somebody overcome a creative block. Or um, I share because I like to, um, I love hearing in the comments that somebody's like, oh my gosh, this was really helpful. I This helped me a lot. Or this motivated me to do this, you know. Like my newbies for uh, art journaling, I love that. I apps this. The whole reason why I do it is because I know that I had an impact on somebody's creative mojo, and somebody was able to learn something or get over a fear that they had. So let me know what you guys think about that, about doing it this way. I have to keep looking up and make sure that I'm actually still recording. So this shading is really really subtle. Um, I kind of feel like it's a little too subtle, so I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And I'm just going straight into the ink. It's still a little wet in the background, not bad, just a little bit. But if I go straight into the ink and it's really pigmented, then I'll get... And it, this is the same color, so again, I'm not introducing any new colors here for the shading. I just waited for it to dry and then just more ink, saturated more ink in there. To get the color that I wanted. So even though you have a, uh, you know, if you don't have a whole bunch of colors, if you think about it this way, when you add more or less water, you can have different variations of the same color. And it's like you've got multiple colors. So if you're on that tight budget, you can make your own colors. A little bit more water. You can make your own colors on top of what you already have, just by adding more or less water. And how you lay it down. But use what you got. You don't have to spend a bunch of money. Because God knows we have a lot, a lot of options out there. And crafting is expensive. Like there's a tool for everything. And I'm I'm I agree, there's you know, using the right tool for the right job is critical. I really think you get better results that way, but and not everybody can afford to do that. And I get that. But you gotta work with what you got and find a way to make it work. Alright, so I like that. I like that shading there. I'm going to put some shading over here. And a little bit of water. Just a tiny bit of water when I'm shading with the same color. Because if you, otherwise you're just you're just re-wetting old ink and you're not going to get a shadow at all. You're not going to get a different variation of color. And getting the right brush for watercoloring, guys, it, that's, it matters. It really does. And if you, you know, wait for a coupon, however you want to do it, um, and then the right paper. Um, this paper that I got, I think I actually got it from Walmart. It's Canson. I'll show you guys again real quick. Uh, Canson um, 90 pound watercolor paper. And it's cold press, which I really like. I really like the cold press. You've got one side that has um, one side that has a little bit of texture to it that you're used to seeing and then the other side is is smooth and I'm using the smooth side because I didn't want I didn't want the the color to be moving along the texture I wanted it to only move where I wanted it to move in this project so but when you're doing like watercolor and you like um, this is more detailed watercoloring in my opinion but if you're doing watercoloring that you like the um, the flowing watercolor which is so pretty if you like that then um, using the other side with the ripples in it would make more sense and you'd get a better result that way but the the foundation that you use for your projects matters paper matters I've got a video too about the different variation between the papers 
and how ink moves on one and not on the other. Sometimes you like it to move, sometimes you don't want it to move. You know, so it depends on, you know, what you want for your project, but but there's a reason for diff all these different papers. And uh, as soon as you figure that out, you'll be happier with the um, results of, of watercolor projects that you attempt. For some newbies, I'm, I'm mentioning that, you know, so you guys have been doing this a long time, you all know that, that's fine. You guys have been doing this a long time, you're probably not even watching me do this because you know how to do this. But And again, light's coming this way, so that's why my, my shadows are on this side. I established that before I started where my light source would be, and that's a critical point too that I learned. Again, I'm not an art teacher, guys. I just learned this from playing in my craft room. I need more water. Um, find out where your light source is first. Where is it going to come from? And then you got to be consistent with it. little variation in the color again same color and it's real subtle and it's it's once it gets closer in you could probably tell the difference if I wanted a, a darker shadow I could come in with a darker blue or even even with like a with a walnut stain or like a you know, black soot if I wanted but that's a little too intense that's more than what I want or you could do multiple layers so if I if I want it darker which I'm going back over this because I know it's mostly dry over here now if I want it even darker, I could still use the same shade and get an even darker shade if I allow it to dry. So I got some reflections there. I like that. I'm happy with it. Cool. All right. Can't tell you guys how many times I start doing a project and I'm like, I don't like that at all. <laughs> and I'm doing a video and then I just scrap the whole thing. Scrap the whole video. I think I'm done with this. I'm going to leave that down there just in case. Why waste, right? This is going to be blue. And now my husband is home. So you'll hear some background noise. Or I might actually have to stop and come back once it gets more quiet. Because he had a very unpleasant thing at work. And I don't want you guys to hear his, to hear his unpleasant banter about what went wrong. Because that might be not appropriate. <laughs> Uh, alright, so, and I think I'll do that because I need to go talk to him make sure he's alright. Because I love him. Alright guys, I'll be back in a second and we'll pick up where we left off. Okay, we'll try. Pick up where we left off. But, you know, family stuff. In the background. <clears throat> Mermaid legume. We're going to see if this will work. That's pretty. I think that's the same color that I used. Now I could use the marker too, but <clears throat> I've already started here, so why not finish here? Maybe I can use the marker for highlighting. Let's see, I don't think I did that on the last one. Again, this brush holds a lot of water, so nothing wrong with dabbing it on a paper towel. <coughs> get, sorry, get some of that water out. Even though I dab some of it off, it's still there. Love that. Yeah, I didn't like it at first because I didn't know how to control it and it, it took practice. Because <clears throat> my watercolor, when I'm detailed like this, it was all over the place. And it, seriously, it just takes practice to figure out the brush you're using, you know, the level of water that it holds. And then the amount of ink that you need, if you're painting with ink, watercolor, you know. If you're painting with watercolor, it's 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 similar. It's very similar. 
but I found like so, oh, darn it. Went out of the lines. I found that <clears throat> some of the watercolors that I was using I used um oops. So some of the watercolors that I was using was um, tubed watercolors. What's up, buddy? Nothing. And uh, those took some getting used to. The watercolor palettes are a little bit different. But I'm still figuring all that out. I'm still practicing. Definitely not. <clears throat> where I could just show you guys. Alright. We're going to keep trying here. Ooh, I'm wobbling. Sorry, guys. A little bit closer so I can see what I'm doing. About knocking myself out. That's the other thing. If you don't have enough water in it, it won't come to the point that you need. I finished some of this off screen, but we're getting most of it. shadows not a whole lot on the shutters just a little I think what I'll use is a very watered down speckled egg. I want it to have just a very fine tint of blue. We'll see. Got a little blob right there, I gotta work out. By the time I'm done, I don't want any white anywhere on here. No white. Okay. What's going to do? Let's make sure that's dry. <clears throat> and then we'll get to the flowers. this for now. shadows but I uh, will see evergreen bow is good too it's such a small thing I think I don't want to overthink it um, old paper might be good for the windows too I'm not sure hmm. oh, I keep forgetting I need a velcro thing on this one I always have a velcro thing on the back to hold them and this is a new one so I haven't got that yet so so let's do a little bit of mowed lawn. Oh my gosh, the camera's like right in my head. <laughs> Don't need that much. And these are really small, so I'm going to use my really, really fine brush. Not too much water. But look at that green. Oh, I love the mowed, mowed lawn. It's 
such a great green. It's a green green, like a true green. <coughs> Mostly just ink on these tiny little things. Very little water on these itty bitty things. Because remember, there's a lot of background noise happening on, uh, with these little flowers that came over. They've got vintage photo on them. Some of them have walnut stain on them. So I gotta kind of have the ink pretty concent. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I gotta have the ink pretty concentrated. On the ones that overlap. Like this one here is blues all over it, so I gotta really concentrate that ink to get the green to even show up. But it does need some water to make it work, you know, with your brush, so you gotta keep your brush moist. Grab enough ink so that it will show. I don't think I'm going to worry too much about shading on, the, on all the leaves. Maybe the bigger ones like these. I'll focus a little bit more on those. Have a little more contrast on those, but the other ones, I don't think so. Oh, I got a shot of water. Some people like to see that. Like, how much water do you use? Tiny, tiny, tiny bit, and then I get it off. If I don't need it, I put it outside of the paint or ink. Where was I? Uh, this guy. <clears throat> there's a lot of little green things on here I remember when I was coloring this before I was like oh my gosh there's more and, and I missed them I missed a whole bunch of them colored that by accident oh there's another leaf right there this one and that one I'm sure I forgot one somewhere. <clears throat> Let's try it. And then I'll come in with some more green. I love that mode lawn. The other the other uh, green that I really love is Evergreen Bow. That is a really, really good one. I don't think I have all the green. Well, I know I don't because there's some brand new ones that came out this winter, but the, I forget the name of the newest green. Um, ah, I don't remember. Something wilderness or something like that. But um, oh, it's so pretty, so so pretty. But it was a nice dark, dark green. It reminded me of a darker version of mowed lawn. It's really pretty. Uh, I haven't gotten the chance to play with it yet because I have not purchased it. But I will eventually. I'm sure. Can't stay away from the ink lines that Tim has because they're awesome. Oh, nope. um, just a tiny little hint of uh, variation of color on these is probably going to be enough. Maybe like at the base. I think that's good. Good enough. All right. 
so now let's think of doing some I'll leave that guy out I'm done with it well I probably will find something I forgot so I wanted to do uh, I already got this for the roses so I'm going to use my fine tip and put some highlights in here very very subtle I don't really notice them very much I notice it, but you probably don't. <laughs> and that's okay. Okay, squeeze lemonade. Uh, mustard seed actually works better. for. I want some yellow in there, and then I want some orange in there. But when I add spiced marmalade, it feels like it's not quite enough, quite, not quite spicy enough. So I have found that mixing that with crackling campfire, um, gives me a little bit more of a deeper orange. I could probably just start with that, but I think the combination of two of these is uh, worked really well for me. So we'll try the mustard seed. I just need a tiny, tiny bit. Make sure I'm clean. Ah, it's a little too much water. Well, I probably didn't get enough. So I think I'll take this one with yellow. Mustard seed, um, in my opinion, is the most yellow I have um, as far as the yellow. Um, the other one that I have is uh, the squeezed lemonade. And that's, that's a nice yellow too, but it's more, I don't know, mustard seed just seems more true yellow to me. I'll do two of those. I need a little bit more. I just pushed the corner down because I just need barely any. I think I'll do, I'll do this one. I have no idea what kind of flowers these are. I, I don't, I couldn't tell you. I have no idea. I'm not good with flowers. Like, I dreamed you. I, I don't know what's what. I really don't. I'm the only girl of, of three kids, and I was a tomboy, and I just never got into the whole floral thing. Doesn't mean I don't like them, but I just, like, never, and still, even to this day, I'm not interested in learning about them. I just, I, they're pretty. I'll look at them. <laughs> That's where it ends for me. That's enough for the yellow. And then let's try our... Sorry if I'm going on a screen, guys. Doing the best I can with what I got. So you see the difference between those? Um, this up here is Crackling Campfire. This is Spice Marmalade. I love Spice Marmalade. It's one of my favorite colors. Um, but it sometimes I need it just a little bit darker. And you can add Vintage Photo to it, but then you wind up getting too much brown, right? So um, I have found that the crackling campfire and mixed with it is a nice combination and it gets me a little bit of a deeper deeper orange when you want a deeper orange so if you mess with it too much you wind up with a brown orange and that's what i'm trying to avoid um but i can see that i'm getting that right now Brown orange works. Oops. Brown orange works good with when you're wanting to add a shadow. Gotta remove that little spot right there. Clean water. Good enough. Get some more spiced marmalade. Can see the difference on the palette between obviously there's a difference between crackling campfire and spice marmalade but it can be hard to tell the difference
but if I mix them, I actually wind up with three totally unique colors. Spice Marmalade, Crackling Campfire, and then the combination of both is, is a totally unique color. And that's that one. And it does, it does wind up looking a little bit more brown. I'm okay with that. Because I'll sh give it a little shadow at the base. It works nicely, actually. And we'll do this one's going to really be hard to see because it's got the brown background, so. We will see. Probably really hard for you guys to see what I'm doing, I just realized. Ugh. There. Now I just gotta keep it here. Otherwise, I'll move it to try and see it, and then you guys won't know what the heck's going on. So, try and keep it there for you guys. Get some of the crackling campfire and put it at the base. Watch your watercolor brushes. If you get water up here and it drips down, that's annoying. Very annoying. And I'm trying to add a highlight there, and the reason why it's not really showing too much is because it's not dry yet. <laughs> it literally just blew on it. There, that's good enough. All right. So these flowers, I got. Hmm. Oh, I forgot. I had, well, I got Lucky Clover in Oxide. That's the thing. I don't have all the same ones that I have in Oxide as I do in Distress and vice versa. So let's see. Hmm. I got yellow. Maybe those should be. The roses are picked raspberry. Maybe I'll use festive berries for that little one. Well, there's one, two, three of them. We will try it. My allergies are crazy right now. I'm sorry I'm sniffling so much. I can't really help it. So these would be nice and red. Probably should have done the roses in this one. But too late now. It's not too late. I could go in and add this color if I really wanted. Festive berries is, again, one of my favorites. A nice, nice pink red, but not quite pink. That annoying pink. You either want pink or you don't. When you don't want it and you got it, it's like, no, go away. Tiny bit of water on there. If I don't saturate it really good, it won't be even visible with everything that we have in the background. You won't even be able to see it. So I got to really, like, I went outside the lines on that one and I'm just going to move on. Because if I try to move it, I'll remove the color in the background too. There we go. Kind of like that. And then maybe, with my fine tip, there I am, I did put my hat back on again, darn it. Let's let this dry real quick, and then I'll try and see if I can use my marker for some highlights on those uh, festive berry ones. It's a 
it's it's not the same, but if I let it dry and then I put this just in one spot, I think it would might add a little bit. Or maybe not, who knows. A little bit. There we go. Okay, flowers done. I think that's cute. Looks good. Now you guys are close up. You can kind of see a little bit better. Hmm. I like the variation of colors. It's like weathered. It looks like it's been rained on. I hope you guys do too. Here's my neighbor walking his dog. You can probably hear my rain going off. Okay, so we were thinking, or I say we, I was thinking, <laughs> crack my campfire, I'm going to put some of these away so I don't lose track. Speckled egg is what I was thinking for it inside the windows. I think that would be the perfect window color. Really, really muted. Um, that's what I used on the last time and it was, it was nice. So my water is mostly clean, clean enough to use. This color is already very muted, but when you add water to it, it's it's definitely going to be exactly where I want it to be. So I don't want to have too much water in my wonderful brush that holds so much. I'm going to be very, very subtle. I didn't plan on doing it the way I'm doing it right now, but I thought I'd try this. Gonna be shadowed a little bit. I'm gonna have to come back to you guys. I hear the garage door opening again. I'll blend that in here. I'll go back in and blend that in. Alright, now lots of water. Not lots, but more water. No color. And I'm going to pull that over. It's going to pull from the color that's already on there. Keep it nice and subtle. I have plenty of water in my brush, so I don't need to keep going back for more. And I didn't wait for it to completely dry, and that's okay. I need a little more down here. And what I'm doing over here is I'm just putting water on it. I'll be right back. Alright, let's try this again. My video is getting all blurry and weird. I've got not the best of cameras. So, like I was saying, I'm going to do missing, and, missing You and Thinking of You. But me fussy cutting that in an angle is going to be a challenge for sure. And I don't have any uh, dies that came with this, which I don't think there'd be a die. Maybe there would be. I, I have no idea. But um, do I want to put it in a card or do I want to put it in my art journal? Because this is kind of like art journal-y page. Hmm. If I cut it down... I don't lose too much of it. I think this wound up being a little smaller than four and a quarter. Yeah, so if I do it to four. And a quarter. Well, let's just see. 
I'd be cutting it down anyway. <laughs> Let me get my act together here. Let me get my act together. I don't need these things out. Um, mow lawn, peel paint, my mustard seed. Okay. Let's start building a card or whatever we decide to do. So, setting five and a half. I'm going to go five, a little less than five and a quarter. Tiny bit off each side here. So I'll have it four and a quarter, then I need that that much. On that side. I'm just eyeballing it. That's not very much, but we'll see. I think I'll have plenty left over, which I will. Probably could have done more. on a card. I just decided it's way too cute on a card. Yeah, that has to happen. <clears throat> I knew it would. knew it would. I guess I could save those bits, but I'm not gonna. Oh, yeah, I really like that. I like the little fairy on there, too. The only thing I wasn't crazy about was in the mail. You know what? I could just print two of her because I did her on a really, really thick paper. And I like her sitting on there, but the other option um, in this set is that I've got little fairies that, this isn't to scale, I've got little fairies that one could be like in the window, like if I cut it, I could have her like in the background of the window. That's a thought too. That's going to be too much work. <laughs> I'm being lazy. So... Let's take a look. This is the cutest stamp set and the cutest. Oh, I just love it. I can have her just hanging out on there, just waving. I can have her sitting on the flower. Oh, I like the sitting one. That's cute. This little, this is the one I used last time, and she's just kind of sitting on there, but she can actually put her hands down on the planner, or maybe at the top, sitting on the top of it. That'll fill that space. Oh my God, that's so cute! I can't stand it. Okay. I have a plan. Oh, it's not going to be on here. So I just need to stamp her on a. And I'm going to use my Misty. Because I'm bound to mess up the stamp. It never fails. I'm not good at it. But I'll get there. So I need another piece of. I need a thick. This will do. This is really, really thick watercolor. And the reason why I want it thick is because I want her to have dimension without adding uh, too much in the mail. So I'll do two of these. I'll just, I'll stamp one and die cut two. Aren't they cute? And this house is fun to color, believe it or not. Really, really cute set. It's uh, Art Impressions, Clear Stamps Art Impressions. And I think I got this from, um, I might have got it from scrapbook.com. 
or Amazon, one or the other. I'm going to do her right here. i got a crease in this paper. This is just a leftover little piece from something. And I'll have to color her too. And I'm going to use my Gina K Amalgam Ink in Obsidian. That just ensures that I, whatever I choose, I'll still be good. Archival works too, but I find that archival doesn't work very well with the... Um, um, it doesn't work well with alcohol markers. That does. It took me a long time to find that right balance. Well, that's a pretty good stamp. That'll do. And then I'll just die cut two of her. And because this paper is so thick, I think that would be enough um, to get it in the mail without it getting too bulky. Because this one, um, if you can tell, it's really bulky, which is good. I mean, it's, it's okay, but and I've mailed them before, but um, a little too much for what I want to do on this one. Get her back where she goes. She should go back home. And those are the dies that come with it. I don't know why I like to put that there, I just do. Okay. There's that. Trying to move, sorry guys. Now, to color her, the cool thing is they come with um, suggestions, which this is really cute, but with my background here, if she's going to be sitting up here, I def she definitely needs some pink. Definitely needs some pink. I think I'll use this. Why not? dress. There we go. And then we'll let that dry. And then I'll come back and add some shading for her dress, and I'll use the same marker. And then for her wings, um, we can try Blue Lagoon. Really, really watered down with some speckled egg. I'm going to try that. The wings need to be really dainty, right? So kind of like a bluish gray tint. Hopefully you guys can see. Hold on, let me get let me get your zoom back in. Wings are a little darker than I wanted them. Oop. So you know what you do? You just put some water on there. Get your paper towel. And dab it off. Done. So forgiving. Sorry guys. Okay. For her skin, I have found... Um, 
old paper. With, oh, I can't remember. Was it wild honey? Mm, I can't remember. But we'll try. We'll do a little bit of wild honey. Some, oh, oh, this one, the, the lid kept popping off, so I had to tape it. I'm going to mix. It's hard to get it close enough to see what I'm doing. I'm still being camera with my setup. There we go. That worked. She does look like a green. <laughs> She's sick or something. Uh, okay. That's not going to work. I don't really have any flesh colors. Um, let's see. It's one thing that he doesn't have is maybe some dried marigold. That's the peachy, the peachiest color I got, and it's in distress, so. I think I'm gonna mess around with her, with her skin tone and screw it up, but good. That made her a little more peachy. A little less green. <laughs> she looked like she was sick. She still looks a little green. Oh well. We're gonna go with it. It'll be fine. No one will notice by the time I color her hair. Um, her hair is gonna be kind of brownish. So. Uh, we're going to go with Walnut Stain. I'll try these guys. Kind of brown. You know what? I need vintage photo. That's what I need. Do some frayed burlap. Boring base. Really. I guess that was all I needed. I'll do some scattered straw. Oh! <laughs> you guys can't see what I'm doing. Fantastic. There we go. Scattered straw. Some vintage photo. Just on the outside. That's cute, but I still think that we need some walnut stain. Just a little. The 
darker I make these little shadows, the lighter the uh, scattered straw becomes. It winds up looking a little bit like a little more blonde. I'm going to let that be good enough. Okay. They are super tiny, but super cute. Let's dry her, and then we're going to cut her. <laughs> I'm not going to cut her. I'm just going to die cut. <laughs> that was funny. I'm to put my stuff away as I go. Get you guys zoomed back out. Behold my big mess that I have here. Now to die cut her. This is the one for this one. I'm going to use some tape because if I mess this cut up, I would be very upset with myself. And it happens all the time. So. I finally found some tape that is better than what I was using before without ripping my paper. And I still have to finagle it, but um, it is this white tape that I got from Amazon. It's artist tape. And it's just like painter's tape, but it's thinner. So the other one I was using was a blue painter's tape, like true painter's tape. And that works okay, but it was too thick, so I didn't like that. So, but for this one, and it's still, you have to tear it off just right, but I just put it on my yoga pants, <laughs> or whatever. You can do it on your skin, too. It gets all your dead skin. It's kind of gross, but whatever. <laughs> it winds up uh, taking some of the tacky off, but still leaving enough. i got to get my head in here, guys, sorry. But leaves enough for um, it to stay put. So... She should stay put now. She's better. And then I will bring in my... My big shot. Run her through, and then I'll do a blank one. Pulling this off, you got to make sure that you go at an angle slow. See, it's still tearing some of my paper. So I have to go really, really, really slow. And I'm impatient as I'll get out. But it does work. Oh my god, look how cute she is. I can't even stand it. She's so cute. I know it doesn't focus. I, I don't know how to get my camera to do it right. So I got that one. Let's cut another one. Doesn't matter if she's straight this time. Might have to cut two, so I'm going to make sure I got room on this paper. This is some really good thick paper. I need three, but I wouldn't want to put more than three on there. Three counting the, the image itself, the colored image. Okay. Save that. Um, I don't know, for those that have their warping um, things, mine warp all the time. The more I use it, the more they warp. But if you put them opposite, opposite each other with the way that they're warping, and you store your um, your big shot. I store it just like that, and then it flattens them out for me. So if you're not doing that, you should definitely, definitely should, because it helps keep them from being all warped. The magic mat came in, and I'm trying to order it, but I haven't been able to so far. 
So if I stack her three times, that's going to give her a nice dimension and it's like my own little shrinky dink. You guys remember shrinky dinks? I know, I'm dating myself right now. Shrinky dinks are super cool. I actually think I have one too many. That's going to give me just as much. Well, no, not as much. But yeah, I'm going to glue her together with my absolute favorite glue of all times. This is the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. The best glue. I love it. It has the perfect amount of dry time. <gasps> oh my god, I just ruined my tip too. That's the second time I've done that. Well, it used to be my all-time favorite. How did that just happen? Oh, I think I just ruined it. No, oh, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna use what I got. So we'll stick her on there. I do love this glue though, seriously. I need to clean out the tip of it. So there she is. This one, nice thick paper, so it's like my own, I just made my own embellishment. It's pretty cool. And you don't need a lot of it. And you got just the right, amount, the right amount of time of wiggle room to get it where you need it to be before it sticks in its new permanent place. Oh, I messed up her face. Oh, no, it's just a little. All right, there she is. She will sit right on there. So where will my sentiment go? Probably right here. Why not, right? And I don't have to use one that's in here um, just because it's curved. I can use something totally different. Like I can use something that was in the kit. Mm. Thinking of you, missing you. Not sure. This is so, oh my god, I could feel that like all day long. Um, I've got some other sentiments I could use. She could be here too, she doesn't have to be up there. So this is an option. She can sit right there. Or right there, and then I could put a sentiment right there. Hope in my heart, you're always welcome to see stamp, blah, blah, blah. So this isn't my only stamp set, but I just wanted to try and use it. down here. It's cute though. Let me find a sentiment that I'm going to end up sizing and I'll bear it back. Okay, so this has been so much fun to do this actually. And I'm sorry I didn't record it guys, but what I did to get this sentiment, where'd it go? There it is. What I did to get that is um, I just straightened that sucker out. <laughs> I was struggling with it and um, if you put it in your Misty, let me show you. Let me get color down here. Let me get that off. Um, if you put it in your Misty, you guys can actually straighten it out. And, so, and you guys probably already figured this out. I didn't because I never had to. So, but I just did. So when you put it down.
obviously it's just going to pop, right? So you want to use, and I'll use this background here so you can see what I'm doing. You use the grids. Let me clean this off. This is important too because if this has got ink and stuff on it, it's not going to work very well. So hold on, let me get that cleaned off. And I just use hand sanitizer to clean the ink off my Misty, and it's done in like two seconds. It's done, all gone. Well, I got ink on the other side. I got to take care of. But that's not the side I'm worried about right now. Okay, so you clean it off real good. I just have that white background so you can see what I'm doing. And then you use the grid line and you just straighten it out. So you're going to get my head. <coughs> Hold on, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. Use the grid line. Straighten it out to, you know, wherever you're going to put your paper. Get as straight as you can. And then you. You test it, and then you go, okay, nope, that's not straight. And then you finagle it until you get it stuck down to where it's straight. And that's how you use those sentiments if you want to make them straight. You just got to force it to be straight on the line. That's not the best, but that's how I did it. And I wiggled it, wiggled it, and I stamped it a couple times, and then I got it, and it worked fine. So, and then it goes right back to what it was intended to be. So that's how you get more out of your stamps too. So a little hack right there, if you didn't already think of it. I know a lot of people, you guys are so clever and you think of things all the time. But you know, you don't know what you don't know. So that's how I did that. Okay, so now, and then I didn't like how thick she was, so I took one of the levels off. I like her um, with two, but three of them was too much. So I just ripped it off, no big deal, right? Um, throw that away. It's not worth keeping. And then I think for my for my format here, I don't need that. I've gone back and forth and back and forth. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right here. I'm missing and thinking of you. I'm going to actually put her in the flower pot, have her sitting there, because I think that looks the cutest. Right in the middle. I'll put well, I could put her off to the side like I did the other one. Which is kind of cute, but I'm kind of centered everywhere, so we'll leave it centered. And we'll put our hands right there. And then these little butterfly dudes, these are from this stamp set, the Art Impressions with all the fairies in it. They have, it's a cute little stamp set. Cute little butterfly right there. And then they have like five, so you can make a bunch of them at once. You can stamp a bunch and there's like four different dies in here. So you can do a bunch at one time. So I just did three and um, just colored them with the same colors. So I used uh, these markers. So I, and I just watered down and then used my, um, my brush and a little bit of water and then I highlighted with the actual um, fine tip for each marker in each color and it worked out great. It was super easy for this tiny, tiny little thing. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do and then I'm going to have to, um, I need this to be bumped up a little bit but I don't, again it's going to be mailed so I don't want it bumped up too much so I'm just going to chop off some extra pieces here that I got and put it behind it and give it some dimension that way. So I could probably still use this missing you and thinking of you so I'll just cut it to size where I want it. I'll do it right now. And then I can I can mess with that later. And use that another time. So this will be behind here. So I will just get my base loaded out and I will cut it and I will pop that up a couple times. Instead of using my foam tape, because my foam tape is just too thick for me usually, a little too thick. Here. 
doesn't have to be perfect. Because no one's going to see it. And that should be enough. Doesn't need to be all perfect. Just needs to stay connected. And that will be enough. Just the right amount of dimension. I'm going to glue her down, find her permanent home, and we'll finally build the card. The, where are my tweezers? These tweezers are awesome. She's going to be sitting there with the little hands on the, oops, little hands on the bench. It's not a bench, it's a flower pot. And then we'll put this guy down. Oh, I need that open. And I just cut this free handed. It's not too crooked. And then we'll put these little, these little butterflies are so cute. They can actually be used for leaves too, if you think about it. But, um, and they can be flying each way. So you can either go this way, flying that direction, or flying that direction. So cute. I love these little guys. They're so, so cute. And they add a lot to a project that's this size, right? They won't work on every project, but. That's his permanent home. This is his permanent home. And we'll do the pink one. And we'll put our panel on our card. And other than the sentiment inside, we'll be done. I'm glad that I decided to make it the card. This was my first go, and I'm not happy with it. It's very, very crooked. Very, very crooked. And I had to freehand it, and it was, ugh, I was just miserable. I did not like that. So if you've got a steady enough hand and you can do that, do it. I do not. It did not work for me. Okay. So my paper is warping a little bit just because the glue is still wet, so... I don't know if you guys have run across that before, but if you just hit it with your heat tool, it, it takes care of it right away for you. Sometimes it warps, but I do it on the back side, obviously. Yeah, it's still a little warpy, but that's okay. I'm going to glue it down. And then I'm just going to put it right there, keep it nice and simple. I could ink the outsides of it with a little vintage photo. I could. I might do that really lightly. I gotta miss this butterfly though. So let's see. I just put all my inks away too, of course. Ooh, I got lucky. All right. Really, really lightly. Now, I am one of those crazy heavy-handed people. I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to go nice and light. 
start with this. I just want to frame it in a little bit, not too much. Because the white on the outside, if I, if I bring it in too much, it's going to look out of place. And I have a lot of white and black, so I've got to have a, a nice even variation. So just hitting it on the edges might be enough. But knowing me and how I'm inktastic <laughs> and everything, I just want to ink everything. I will probably want to bring it in a little bit. And yeah, I do. Just a little. It'll kind of help to bring the focus inward. Got to be careful when we're on that butterfly. It will help bring your eye into the center. Like, like you can't anyway, but still, it just helps with the visual. Thing. And since it's watercolor, it's got a nice texture on it too. The texture for the watercolor paper. It's really subtle, but it's nice. I like it. It adds to like that aged stucco look in the background. Alright, that was very subtle, but I like it. There it is. I'm gonna make it happen. I gotta wash my hands off real quick. Best way to get the ink off your hands real quick before you start messing with your white cardstock is uh, hand sanitizer and your towel. Done. Otherwise, you're inking like see, and I, I just did that too. Uh, so, clean this because I put ink on it. That's the only thing about this glass mat is that I don't see that I have ink on it, <laughs> and you forget, you know, because you're just doing your thing. There we go. Now it's all clean. I'm just going to use the same glue. It works really well. And I'm not going to add any bulk because I'm going to mail it. So I'm not going to pop it up. I do like to do that but in cards lately, but I'm not going to do it on this one. home. Alright. And then inside I can do some more brick stamping if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna leave it open so that I can just write in there for the person that's going to be getting this. There it is! Well, I hope you guys liked it. Thank you so much for watching. This was a really, really long video, but it was live, and that's how that live thing goes with many interruptions, but we got it done. But I hope it got you guys inspired to use, well, yeah, I mean, use whatever you have, but um, I use that uh, craft kit from Simon Says Stamps. I love their kits. And then uh, just a stamp set that I got. This is super cute. Again, just, um, and I'm not paid to do this. It's just something that I really enjoy using. So I like to share with you guys. So it's the Art Impressions Clear Stamps um, by original artist Bonnie Krebs. And I think if, if you can get it on scrapbook.com. Um, probably other places too. Um, scrap book.com is my go-to place and then Amazon might have it too so alrighty and then uh, 
that stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. Super cute stamp set. You can use it for so many things. It's really good for um, sympathy ones. Just missing you. I'll hold you in my, in, my, in my heart and thoughts. It's hard to find the right sentiment on um, sympathy cards. And Simon Says Stamps does a really good job with um, finding the words for you. So, Alright, so more to come. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Almost forgot. The last special touch is Winkastella on these little butterflies and her wings. There we go. You probably can't see it on the camera, but a little bit of sparkle and the butterflies and the fairy. She's magically visiting you at your windowsill. There you go. Now it's done.